Lions in art. Lions are beautiful, majestic animals. Artists all over the world have used lions in their artwork. Edward Tinga Tinga painted this lion. He was born in the southern region of Tanzania. He loved to paint the animals of his country. His artwork became very popular. He soon had a difficult time making enough paintings. He started the Tinga Tinga Art Cooperative Society. He hired local artists to paint with him. The art style is now called Tinga Tinga. They are known for painting the animals and landscapes where they live. This painting was created by Tinga Tinga artist Mabusa. Can you find the lion and its cub? What other animals do you see? Henry Rousseau, a French painter, created this painting in 1897. He named it The Sleeping Gypsy. How does this painting make you feel? What do you think the lion is doing? You can see these lions at the Forbidden City in Beijing, China. They guard the entrances to the temples. The lion is a symbol of strength, power, and protection in China. The lion dance is one of the most important traditions at Chinese New Year. It is performed to bring prosperity and good luck for the upcoming year. The lion dance is also a way to create a festive atmosphere and bring happiness. Can you see the two lions here? Let's see one dance. Kids like to make lion art too. How are these paintings the same? How are they different? It's your turn to create a lion now. Let's go to the drawing board. And if you finish early, here are a few follow-up activities. You could research lions online and find out about where they and how they live. You could check out a lion book from your library or write a story about your lion drawing. So today you're gonna need a sheet of construction paper cut into a square. It can be any color that you want. I'm using black today, but you could use other colors as well. You're going to use some chalk pastels you need a sheet of scratch paper for cleaning your pastels and a pencil with an eraser. We're gonna start with just our pencil today, so I'm gonna move those to the side. Now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to find the very center of your paper, okay? So with your finger or with your pencil uh, tip, go ahead and find the center of your paper. And once you find the center of your paper, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use your eraser end and you're going to make a line. And you don't want this line to be too big because you need to have room um, in the end for your lion's mane. So I've got a line with room at the top and room at the bottom. Now at the bottom of this line, I'm going to take and I'm going to make a curved line going out on both sides. Kind of like I'm putting in a little smile on each side. And that's gonna be the bottom part of my lion's, um, uh, or the top part of my lion's mouth. 
And then from here, I can take and make a rectangular shape for the chin. Now I'm gonna trace over this in white so you can see it. You could trace it with your pencil if you want to, or you can keep it in pencil or eraser clear to the very end. So I have that part drawn so far. Now I wanna go ahead and start putting in my lion's nose. So I'm gonna come a little ways up this line, and then I'm gonna make a curved V shape. And you'll notice how it's kind of curved in a little bit. So not a straight V, a slightly curved V. So I want it to come and slightly curve out and slightly curve out. And now for our next step, I want to then take and curve it up a little bit, a little bit of a curve up. So first I curved in, now I'm curving up. Gives me a very nice shape. Now one thing I am really trying to pay attention to is symmetry. So I made this center line and I want what's happening on this side to match what's happening on that side. So my curves are the same and how far I come out on each side is the same. So really take a moment right now and look. Do you have symmetry or do you need to go ahead and make some slight adjustments? And know that it's okay to make adjustments whenever you need to. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish our nose. For the next part of our nose, I wanna to come to the bottom of my V and then come up a little ways, almost to the point where I'm like right in between these two tips. And I wanna make a little bowl shape. So I'm gonna make a little bowl shape and I want it to be symmetrical, the same on both sides. And then after I make my little bowl shape, then I'm gonna take and curve like I make a little tiny hill. So first I started with a bowl, now I have a little hill. And then the last little thing you do, you come to the bottom of that hill and you do a light, slight little curve up. And that will give you a lion's nose. So now I'm gonna come over to the edge of my lion's nose and I wanna take and make a line that comes in a little bit. And I'm gonna do it on both sides and then I'm gonna to check to see if they're symmetrical. And if one's not in quite as much as the other, I'm gonna make that adjustment. That's where it's nice to draw with the eraser. It's very easy to get rid of it. And then I'm gonna take and curve it over. I'm gonna make sure once again that I have symmetry with those curves as well. And I'm gonna trace over this in a white pencil so it's easy for you to see. So I first curved in and then I curved up. I first curved in and then I curved up. So I have this shape There we have it. So now I'm gonna put in my actual eye. So I'm gonna come up a little ways and I'm gonna take and make an eye shape. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm gonna check for symmetry. And then once I feel like I've got symmetry, I can trace over it with my pencil if I want. Now my next step is gonna to be to put in my uh, eyes. So I come in, I put in a curve and a curve. So one at the bottom and one at the top. I do the same thing on my other side. And I can see I got that one a little low, so I'm gonna make an adjustment because I'm making sure I have symmetry. And then once I like those, I'm gonna take I could trace over them with my pencil. And I have my eyes in. Now, lion's eyes will also have, um, 
they're going to catch little glints of light so we want to put our highlight in so we're going to just take and draw a little circle in each of them and know that eventually we're going to be filling that in with chalk okay so i'm going to just put it there as a little space holder right now and know that those are going to become uh, be filled in with white with chalk later on now we need to make our lion's head. We have our whole face, and we're gonna actually use this face to be able to make our structure. So the first part I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out to the edge of my eye, and I wanna make a slight curve going out. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now it's important that I have them out the same distance on both sides and that my curve is the same on both sides. So first I take and I put in these curves. Next I'm going to come down to the ends of my mouth. Okay, And at the end of my mouth, I'm going to actually come in and do a slight little curve in as well. I can do it with my eraser first to make sure I like it. So I have a slight curve in as well and it attaches into my mouth. And then to join them I'm actually going to curve out the other way. I check for symmetry. If I like it I can trace over it with my pencil and hold my space. And now I've got my basic jaw and now I'm going to go ahead and put in the top of my head. Now I don't want it to be too narrow. I actually want to come up a little ways Well, I'm going to just make a little bit of a curve. So I want you to notice that this space isn't that tiny. It's an, actually it's a pretty big space. And then once I have that in, then I'm going to just take and curve, curve over with my edges. And I have the top of my lion's head. Now I'm going to need some ears on here, so I'm going to go over to these curved parts and I'm going to put one rounded shape and another rounded shape. And I want to have symmetry, I want to do the same thing over on this side. So I have my ears drawn in. So now I have the whole basic face of my lion. So the next thing you really want to plan out is how you put in your mane. Now we're going to just draw in a few lines, not all of them, because we're going to really be doing our mane in chalk. But we kind of want to know how the lion's mane flows. So you have to think of it kind of as a waterfall. It's going to be flowing down like this. So if I find the top of my head, and if you want to do this with your eraser, I find the top of my head, it's actually going to flow almost like a V going out. So it's going to go in this direction over this ear. And I'm going to put in just a couple guidelines. I'm not going to fill it in full. So in the center, it, on this side, it will all curve over this way. So I'm going to put in just a few guidelines. I'm going to be filling it in with chalk, but I want to know which direction it's going in. And as it comes down the face, it continues to do these curves. And it cascades on each side. And then it comes in here and then it cascades down from the chin. So that's kind of the basics of how the fur works on the lion. Now, let's go ahead and start playing with our chalk pastels. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna color in my face. I'm not gonna worry about my lion's mane just yet. I just want to concentrate on my face. Now you can go ahead and color your face however you want with any kind of colors you want. It's completely up to you now that you've got your lion drawn. Um, you can stay in traditional colors using you know yellows, oranges, browns, um, or warm, really warm colors. Um, so if you want to stay with more traditional you would choose probably some of these colors and maybe also add in some whites. So you would play with this, okay? But you could also just have fun. Maybe you want a blue lion, maybe you want a pink lion. It's completely, completely up to you. One thing I want to remind you, let's say you want to go and do white and your white is very, very dirty. 
Remember how you can use a sheet of paper and you rub on it. And when you rub on it, you can actually clean a chalk pastel this way. So now I have a clean chalk pastel. So know that if you need to clean your chalk pastels at any point, you can. So now you're gonna go ahead and start to play with your color. So one thing I would say on the face is the colors are also going in the flow of fur. So these are kind of going in that way. These are kind of going in this way. And when you come down onto the face, things are gonna come in, down in this direction. So as you go to do your coloring in, to go in that direction, okay? But once again, how you do it is up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and take color into mine, and I want you to take color into yours. One thing I did forget to mention is you wanna to wait to use black. Okay, so you're gonna use black at the very, very end. If you take black in at the very beginning, it can be really, really hard to handle. And you can also, as you put your color down, see how I'm using my finger as a way to blend it. And if I think, if it starts to be hard to see something, I can use my finger and kind of blend to get a better view. It'll take off some of the chalk. So you can see how I'm using my finger to do my blending. And then it starts to make it a little bit easier once again to see my eyes and my nose. And after I do a blending, after that, if I wanna go in and then add in more streaks so that it has a little bit more of a hair-like look, I can totally do that. So I can do blending combined in with different kinds of streaks happening. I can I can totally do both. And once again, I'm waiting to do my black. I'm going to wait to put in my whiskers. Now once I get my basic lion face in, then I can start to work on my mane. Once again, I'm waiting to do my eyes and my nose. Um, often in lion's manes, there's a lot of white in the chin. So if you're trying to go with a little bit more realistic, you can take and add some white into that chin. But then I'm gonna go ahead and start playing. with adding in my mane. And I'm realizing I forgot to do my ears, so I'm gonna come back in and do my ears really quickly too. I'm gonna do a slightly darker color on the inside of them. Now once I get my basic mane in, I can once again take my fingers in. And after I do one layer, I'm gonna keep adding in more. I'm gonna keep building. Once I finish my mane, then I like to go back into my animal a little bit or into my face and just do a little bit more. Now I can go in and do my eyes and my nose. When I go to do my nose, I actually like to use a little bit of browns and blacks in mine. 
So I first put in my brown. I'm going to use my pinky and rub it in. Now I can come back in with my black a little bit. I'm going to put in that little curve I had going on before. I'm going to play with a little bit of dark just at the very bottom. You could always use Q-tips for blending too if you don't like touching the chalks. So I have my little, uh, my lion nose there. You'll notice I have black, a little bit at my edges and some brown in the middles. So now you're gonna also decide what color you want for your eyes. Um, I like to go in and first just put in a little, kind of redraw my eye in. And I'm actually gonna use browns in my eye. You can use any color you want. I'm going to add in a little bit of black into mine too. I know that black is a really strong color, so you don't need very much of it. It is very, very strong. And then the last thing I do would do is I would take my white and put in those highlights. So we want it to look alive. Now once I finish my eyes, the next thing I want to do is I want to put in my whiskers. Now Lion's whiskers, they actually have these rows of spots. So you take, and it's like I have a little row of dots. And then generally there's um, two to three rows of dots. And you do that on both sides. And then I actually like to take a brown and soften mine a little bit. So I started with my black. But I like to make them blend. See how that just lets them blend just a little bit and look a little bit more natural? And now my next step is going to be to add in some whiskers. So a really nice thing about whiskers, you can go to one of these dots and you can just pull out a line. And you don't need a whisker in every single one of them. And you kind of want them to be a little bit wonky. And they can cross over with each other. And that will make them look a little bit more realistic. So you take and you add in A couple of whiskers and if you don't like one of them see how easy it is to take it out I can just do a little bit of rubbing bring in a little bit more color again and I could redo it so there we have our beautiful line I hope you enjoyed making this with me today uh, I'll see you the next time bye bye Thank you.